Twisted Metal was released in 1995 in North America and developed by Single Track. Yup, the very same single track that made Rogue Trip. However, unlike Rogue Trip, Twisted Metal marked the birth of car combat games. The idea for Twisted Metal came when David Jaffe and a few other lead designers were stuck in traffic on their way home from a meeting. They jokingly imagined using machine guns and rockets to blow away cars that were in their way. And I mean, who can blame them? They didn't know it at the time, but this idea would spawn eight unique titles, along with a comic book and a TV adaptation starring Will Arnett as the voice of Sweet Tooth. The show is still in the works, but for today, our focus is on the first game in the series. Twisted Metal garnered positive reviews almost across the board, scoring between 7 and 10 out of 10. Basically everyone criticized the graphics and length, but praised the gameplay and multiplayer, which I'd have to agree with. The game is an absolute blast to play, but it looks like shit, and a few more levels would have been greatly appreciated. But considering this was Single Track's first attempt, I'll give it a pass. Maximum Magazine applauded the vehicle balance and free roam style levels, but criticized the length of the game, stating that it's a playable game, but one which is probably destined for obscurity. Funny, considering Maximum only printed for two years and Twisted Metal is still going. Next Generation said that its textures are simple, but this allows the action to play out fast enough that you won't notice, and concluded that it's another showcase title for PlayStation. Just before release, a focus group came to try out the game, and in David Jaffe's words, the focus group tore the game apart. The group was comprised of hardcore fighting gamers who didn't really understand Twisted Metal as it was described. Its description is that it's a fighting game in cars, and of course, being the first of its kind, there wasn't really anything to compare it to, so a fighting game in cars is as close as you're gonna get. So without more delay, let's get right into it. Does anyone remember Twisted Metal? The game takes place on Christmas Eve 2005. The 10th annual Twisted Metal competition is about to wreak havoc on the streets of LA. A mysterious sewer dweller by the name of Calypso is the leader of this yearly competition, which sees contestants fight to the bitter end in their own custom armored death machines. The objective is simple, stay alive, wipe out the competition, and whoever wins gets anything their heart desires. But who is Calypso? Well, I've always surmised that he's the devil, but this game in particular leaves it pretty ambiguous. And I've always wondered how he acquires his contestants. Well, in this game, it's said that he sends invites to all his contestants via email. I mean, this is all good and well, but the thought of Needles Kane, Minion, or even Mr. Grimm checking their email is absolutely hilarious to me. Do they even have computers in hell? But the story is conveyed through a crude text crawl. And originally, the endings for each character were planned to have FMV scenes, but they got pulled as the developers thought they were too offensive. But thankfully, some were included in the extras menu of Twisted Metal Head On. So feast your eyes on Sweet Tooth's original ending. Let the winner in. Congratulations! You have won my contest. Welcome to my home. As you know, Mr. K, you are now able to claim any prize you request. You just don't know. You don't know what it was like for me. You just... And we just and I... And you... And them... You don't know! Look, I'm a bit confused, Mr. K. You, you do understand, by winning High Octane, you are entitled to any request of any value. And yet, you asked me for this? Oh man, give me that! Give me! A paperback? You can't be serious! Oh man! Down! Down! You get down the street! You... You... You said it would be easy! Do you know what they did? Do you? You? Now it's my turn! It's my world! 
It's my word, it's my turn, it's my day! taking your truck those were truly some oscar worthy performances there standing ovations all around but i mean i get it they were trying to make sweet tooth look as insane as possible but instead it just makes him look like one of those crazy people who stand at stoplights yelling bible verses at cars with a giant sign hanging around their neck saying the end is near and definitely not someone the average person should fear in the official release the video is replaced by yet another slow text crawl in it we learn the significance of his wish the paper bag is actually his best friend and believe it or not it has a name crazy harold the wacky lunch sack and honestly, I can't tell which is worse, the video or the text. I'm just glad they got him right in later games. There are six levels in total with one unlockable, and I know what you're thinking. Only six? That's a short game, and you'd be right. It is very short, but all the levels are decent and pretty diverse. The first level in the game is Arena Duel. It's a small arena set in a circus tent. It serves as a tutorial stage to get players accustomed to the controls and feel of the game. The next two are Warehouse District Warfare and Freeway Free For All. These two maps were initially intended to be one large map, but this brought up too many technical issues and it was found to be boring due to low enemy count. So they separated and shrunk them. Warehouse District Warfare is more or less just a few city blocks with narrow side streets and a large open parking lot in the corner. Freeway Free For All is quite the contrast, it's a long winding loop of highway. This one can be pretty frustrating, the AI always seem to fight at choke points and if you're a slower vehicle and they start chasing you, there isn't a lot of cover in which to lose them, meaning you'll take a lot of damage in the process. If I were to guess how these two were planned to be connected, I'd say that the freeway loop was originally way larger with the warehouse district in the middle, but again, that's just my guess. Overall, having these two maps together is a wicked idea, but I'm glad they made the change. Later games in the series, namely Twisted Metal Black, featured large maps like this and they ended up being quite boring, at least to me. River Park Rumble is the fourth level. It consists of two city areas with a park and a river through the center, hence the name. It's very similar to the downtown level from Twisted Metal Black, minus the skating rink and winter theme. Next up is Assault on Cyberbia. It includes the suburbs, an aqueduct, and a portion of highway. The highway portion looks very unfinished, almost like there was originally more to this level. But in any case, I think it's the best level in the game, with the streets and aqueduct being different not only in appearance, but also in function. The suburbs themselves are more open, making it easy to pick on a bunch of opponents at once, but the aqueducts are very linear, making them perfect for jousting, and the portion of highway is great for losing your pursuer. Our last stop is Rooftop Combat, and it's more or less a giant flat square with a few lower platforms and little cover. It's not a very memorable level, at least not compared to the others. Rooftop Combat does repeat for the boss battle against Minion, a massive six-wheeled tank driven by an actual demon. And this is a very tough fight. Minion is fast, very durable, and his attacks hit like wrecking balls. Add on to that the lack of cover on the rooftop, and you have a real challenge on your hands. Fight for Your Life is Twisted Metal's only secret level, and it's just the arena duel level with five opponents, so can you really call it a secret level? Outside of sadists and the severely mentally ill, I have no idea why anyone would willingly play this one. It's just brutally punishing. The levels on offer here are pretty good. I mean, some have a very samey feel and color palette, but that's because they all take place within the city of LA. As I mentioned, my personal favorite is Assault on Cyberbia. It's just such a departure in aesthetics, and that's what sets it apart and elevates it above the rest for me. And don't get me wrong, I would have loved a few more levels, but at least the ones on offer are pretty strong. 
So, with the levels covered, it's time to talk about the characters. There are 12 playable characters in total, and the roster in Twisted Metal is ever evolving, so some would go on to become staples of the series like Sweet Tooth or Mr. Grimm, while others like Pit Viper would disappear entirely. But make no mistake, the character lineup in this game is a prime example of Measure Twice Cut Once. These cars are all legendary in their own right, and they all fit the game perfectly. I've mentioned in previous videos on card combat games that I usually always go for beefier but slower vehicles, and in any game where I can play a sweet tooth, I will. I'm a complete fanboy. This would be the first time we see the trademark Killer Clown and his demonic ice cream truck. Commonly referred to as Sweet Tooth, his name is actually Needles or Marcus Kane. And as far as I can tell, Twisted Metal 2016 and Twisted Metal 4 are the only times where he's referred to as Sweet Tooth by Calypso. But I'll get into that in another video. In this game, Sweet Tooth's appearance is quite the departure from what we've become accustomed to seeing when he's on screen. In this game, his mask is rubber with blue makeup around his eyes and green hair. But the most notable difference is his flaming head, or lack thereof. Out of all the characters, it makes sense for Sweet Tooth to have seen the most development as he would go on to become the mascot of the entire series. He even ran the contest briefly, and played vehicular soccer, but those are topics for another video. Warthog is driven by Commander Mason and typically appears in a very militaristic fashion. In Twisted Metal 1, he's a slow yet heavily armored Humvee with a mid-range special. Yellowjacket is driven by Charlie Kane, the father of Marcus or Needles Kane if you prefer. The vehicle itself is an old school taxi cab, with a very fitting special being a thrown Molotov. Spectre is a zippy glass cannon driven by the ghost of Scott Campbell. He fires a ghost missile that can travel through walls to reach its target. Now that I think about it, I don't think I've ever finished a Twisted Metal game while playing as this character. Mr. Grimm is the only man or reaper to drive a motorcycle in the Twisted Metal tournament. His name is just three question marks while his bike is named Mr. Grimm, but seeing as how he's a Grim Reaper in most of the games, I think it's safe to assume he is here too, so we'll just call him Mr. Grimm. He's another glass cannon but has the best special in the game. Thumper is a hot pink lowrider driven by Bruce. His special is a flamethrower, which can be very powerful, but you gotta get close and stay close to use it effectively. I never really liked Thumper, there were just always better or more interesting options. Pit Viper is a dune buggy driven by Angela Fortin. Her special is an acid spray that deals moderate damage. In my opinion, just like Thumper, there are lots of better choices in the game. Pit Viper is also the only vehicle to not appear in any other Twisted Metal game in the series. Although Grasshopper was kind of her spiritual successor. Outlaw, driven by Sergeant Carl Roberts, is more or less a standard cop car, with a special weapon that zaps nearby enemies. Shockingly similar to Ozone's special from Rogue Trip. See what I did there? Darkseid is a monstrous semi-truck, capable of crushing most vehicles with ease. This iteration is driven by Mr. Ash. Darkseid's special is very weak and underwhelming. It looks like a blaster shot from Star Wars. Another thing I've noticed about Darkseid is that the truck takes up so much of the screen, even while zoomed out all the way. You could go first person to mitigate this, but doing so causes issues on its own. First off, it's really wicked to have a first person view with the steering wheel and dashboard visible, but it's disorienting, and when you get hit the entire screen flashes red, which is incredibly annoying. I'll just say I'm glad I'm not an epileptic, it's for that reason that I won't show it in action, but trust me, it's very bad. Hammerhead was my personal favorite in Twisted Metal 2 when I was young, appearing as a beefy monster truck driven by Dave and Mike. Naturally, as monster trucks do, Hammerhead's special is to simply run over and crush the enemy. Crimson Fury is a sleek red sports car. This iteration is driven by Agent Stone. Just like Mr. Grimm and Spectre, Crimson Fury has low armor, high speed, and high handling. But the special weapon is very boring. Visually, it's very similar to Darkseid's and only slightly more powerful. I see no reason why anyone would pick Crimson Fury over other cars of similar stats. And last on the list is Roadkill. Driven by Captain Spears, Roadkill is a fast, moderately beefy vehicle that nicely bridges the gap between lighter and heavier vehicles. Roadkill appears to be cobbled together from scraps of various wrecked cars, and is special, which is a rusty steel javelin that fires out at 100 miles per hour, inflicting high damage is awfully fitting. Roadkill is a great choice for those who like armor and speed, so long as they're willing to sacrifice handling to get it. I should really touch on the desires of the contestants. These desires are a core component to the plot of every single game across the series. In later games, these desires become more complex, with some directly impacting other characters. 
But in the beginning, they're pretty simple. For example, Outlaw wants to force Calypso to end the Twisted Metal tournament. Pit Viper wants a million in cash, and Spectre wants to not be a ghost anymore. Like I said, pretty simple desires. Twisted Metal 1 has a pretty decent assortment of weapons to choose from. First, and most obvious, is the machine gun. It's your base weapon and every car has one. After that are three weapons I like to call the Twisted Metal Trio, consisting of the homing, fire, and power missiles. They appear in every single game in the series, remaining unchanged and classic to this day. As for what they do, the homing missile does the least damage of the three, but homes in the best, hence the name. The power missile does more damage than the homing missile, but tracks the enemy less accurately. And lastly, the power missile. This beast does the most damage, but doesn't home in at all, requiring some skill to use. Beyond those, you have the rear and freeze missile, the rear flame, the drop mines, tire spikes, catapults, and the oil slick. For this game and how the levels are designed, these weapons really make sense. However, they were all either taken out of subsequent games entirely or turned into energy attacks, which I think is the obvious choice. Why would I seek out a non-lethal weapon like the freeze missile when I could just go for a power or fire missile? And of course, there are turbo and health pickups, which I don't feel need to be explained. Twisted Metal is insanely fun to play through and controls relatively well too, even with Sweet Tooth, who as the game states, drives like a bathtub on wheels. I did notice the control can get a bit delayed, especially when there's a lot of action on screen. I can only assume that this is due to frame drops, and speaking of frame drops, they happen very often, mostly on the larger maps like Assault on Cyberbia or Rooftop Combat. Anytime you can see far away, it gets extremely choppy and disorienting. One thing I really like is that the burning husks of defeated drivers stay on the map indefinitely, which is a very minor but awesome detail, but you better pray no one dies on a narrow road, or the wreck will be almost impossible to pass. Another thing I didn't notice until I was almost done getting footage is that there are dudes standing on the side of the road shooting at you. I never noticed this, that's a wicked little detail and incredibly annoying, so I run them over any chance I get now. So, when I was young, Twisted Metal became kind of an obsession for me that lasted all the way up till the present day. I played it almost constantly back then and got sucked right in. The guns, the cars, the levels, and of course, the chaos all grabbed me and didn't let me go. Twisted Metal is, in my opinion, one of the best series ever made, so it's difficult to remain unbiased while talking about the games and critiquing them. But here, how about this? I'll put myself in the year 1995. Twisted Metal hasn't reached the heights of critical acclaim that it would in the years to follow, so when it comes to the first game, I like to think of it as more of a proof of concept. When you play the game, you'll notice stuff like the menus lack flair, and the story is conveyed through a text crawl. The music's good, but it's not quite there yet and the characters needed a little longer to gestate. Looking at it objectively, you can really see that the idea of Twisted Metal is still unfolding and hasn't reached its full potential yet. And this becomes undeniable once you shift your attention over to Twisted Metal 2, which I have every intention of doing on the channel, so be sure to like and subscribe so you know exactly when it drops. In all seriousness, this video was truly a labor of love for me, and I hope I've done the game justice. But did any of you remember this game? Was it your first Twisted Metal? If not, which one was? I'm going to push off now, but first I'd like to thank you all for watching. I appreciate it greatly, and I hope you have yourself a wonderful day, and we'll see you in the next one. What was the prize you were requesting? You know the deal, Calypso. I signed your contract. Let's get this over with. Gentlemen, I'm not the one who kidnapped your girlfriend. But as promised, she is here perfectly safe. Bruce! Bruce! What's happening? See? One big happy family. And just to show you how much I care, I've even done you the favor of bringing your real enemy directly to you. <laughs> what am I doing here? Oh my god. Thanks, Calypso. I told you before I would finish doing your hits for you. You don't have to do this, man. You don't have to do this. I'm sorry about the girl, man. You don't have to do this. Cross me again. It's over. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thanks, Calypso.
stuff was anticlimactic. Oh my god. <laughs>